Welcome. Bonjour. Thank you for coming out today. Thank everyone for coming out today. And I want to thank my colleagues who are here. Many of them, Harold Albrecht, Ted Falk, Glenn Maltz, Dane Lloyd, Joe McCollin, Bev Shipley, Kevin Sorensen, Brad Trost, Arnold Beerson, Dave Van Kestren, Senator Norman Doyle has joined us. I hope I've gotten everyone and former colleagues, Pierre Lemieux, James Lenny, and Vladimir Lizon. We want to remember today, especially our colleague Mark Warawa, who needs your prayers as you leave today. Pray for him, a pro-life hero who is now facing health issues of his own. Thank you for coming out each year. Thank you for your faithfulness to this cause. Every person has a set of beliefs upon which they base their lives that informs their view of where they have come from, where they are going, and who they are. Your beliefs tell you that life begins at conception, that every life is precious and of equal value, and that it should only end with natural death. That is why you and I are here. We believe in pro-life, in pro-life that touches all across human experience. Pro-life is standing with a young woman as she faces an uncertain future and is committed to her unborn baby. Pro-life is working to protect freedom of speech and belief to allow different perspectives to be put respectfully forward. Pro-life is protecting freedom of conscience and, and religion so that people are not required to violate their deepest beliefs, either in the workplace or at school. Pro-life is standing with our friends and family who have children who are disabled, whether through tragic circumstances or by birth. Pro-life is defending palliative care provisions so that people can truly end their days in dignity. Pro-life is working to defund international abortions. We can do so much better. Our pro-life, our maternal newborn health initiative with pro-life in every way, including providing nutrition, vaccinations, and necessary information for mothers and their new children. And pro-life is working towards a law in this country that protects the unborn. We need a law, and that is why we are here. Pro-life is to be pro-science. Last weekend in Times Square, when a live ultrasound was played on a jumbo screen, the entire area became silent as that child's heartbeat was heard. Pro-life is also campaigning with, for life with grace and forgiveness. We know and we weep for the six million Canadians who have been aborted and cannot take their place in our society, which has been so blessed in the past. But we are not called by conscience to condemn others, but to display a love that comes from beyond us, a love that can transform their lives as it has ours and so many others. Oswald Chambers wrote, we are in danger of being stern where God is tender and of being tender where God is stern. Let us be people who are gracious. I was asked to mention my pro-life or my private members bill C-418. It's a small step protecting freedom of conscience for medical personnel. It would protect people against... Thank you. It will protect people against intimidation, threats, and coercion. It will protect them from their employment status being threatened because their conscience will not allow them to participate in assisted to, uh, suicide and euthanasia. It's a small start, one that is important, and if it does not get passed in the limited time we have in this parliament, I know there are MPs who will be taking up in the next parliament. So I honor you for your commitment here today. If laws are going to change in this country, it will not come just from a small group of courageous MPs. It will come because of a groundswell across this country of uh, people like yourselves who have the courage to stay strong, to inform their neighbors and invite them to join us, and from a movement across the country that will insist that Canadians be protected from conception until natural death. You are the leaders of that movement, and to you I say thank you.